All right, welcome to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous Enhanced Edition. This time we'll be playing a Reformed Fiend into Gold Dragon. Uh, before I get started, uh, a little disclaimer. Uh, my streams are not handled the same way that my Let's Plays are. They're not nearly as... I wouldn't say thorough because I'm still very thorough. But I don't read all the dialogue out loud. Um, basically, tr I treat my streams like how I play the game on my own time. While also interacting with an audience. So I, I still don't skip any voice acting, and uh, I will read any sort of, uh, like, unique dialogue from a mythic path out loud. But this is, uh, this is me playing it on my own time, but I'm streaming it. So don't expect the, uh, the same treatment that my Let's Plays get. Alright, let me double check a couple things, make sure I set everything up correctly. It's been a while since I've started a new stream. I got that did update. Cool. All right, that's all I had to check. A couple more things. Also, my thumbnail. So for all these uh, various let's plays through Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous, I try to do like a small detail on uh, a Relu Vorlesh, indicate which mythic path I'm playing. The trickster path had that little jester hat on her head. This time I have the gold eyes for the gold dragon. Nothing super fancy, just you know, small, small details to differentiate. Alright, so we'll be playing the main story, of course, on core. The best difficulty. And that's because all the uh, enemy damage modifiers are zeroed out. So critical hits are treated normally. Um, Damage of party is multiplied by one, so the same. Yeah, no modifiers to the enemies, they're not weaker or stronger. And there was... I think another difficulty I wanted to try out. Uh, where's it at? Yeah, additional enemy behaviors. I'm gonna give this one a shot. It does make it custom, but we're playing basically in core, just a little bit more difficult. I don't be silly, Matthew. This is my first playthrough of uh, Wrath of the Righteous. In fact, I've never even heard of the game until today. <laughs> okay, so we do have to play a Tiefling for the Reformed Fiend class. And uh, that's really the only portrait. Yeah, this one doesn't make as much sense. Plus, I've used this one before. Alright, so we get down to Blood Rager. So Blood Ragers are essentially sorcerers and barbarians mixed. That's usually how archetypes are handled. Uh, the Reformed Fiend kind of throws a paladin into the mix. So it's a sorcerer, barbarian, paladin. So we get a mobility, athletics, persuasion, perception, lore nature, knowledge, arcana as our class skills. Uh, the teachings of Light God say that everyone deserves the right to redemption. Everyone except the demons. Reformed fiends are demons who have entered on the path of good, although they still look like monsters in the eyes of the most living. But no one will dare to doubt that the rage with which they fight the creatures of evil is a force that the world needs most in these difficult times. So we get a uh, bloodline, of course, as most sorcerers do. Uh, bloodline is removed. Uh, so, so we get certain bloodlines and others are removed. There's actually only two bloodlines you can take as a reformed fiend. Abyssal and Infernal. Uh, we'll get Fast Movement, uh, Blood Rage, Blood Rage of Proficiencies, which includes Simple, Martial Weapons, Light, Medium Armor, and Shield Proficiency. Uh, what else do we lose? Uh, we lose some damage reduction, but we get damage reduction specifically against everything but Evil, which isn't that handy for this playthrough. Is that really it? I think that's it. Oh, Wave Redemption, here we go. I know there's a couple other things I was missing. So, Hatred Against Evil. At 5th level, Reform Fiend gains a plus 1 bonus on attack and damage rolls against evil creatures while in Blood Rage. This bonus increases by plus 1 for every 5 levels. That's really good for this campaign since you're mostly fighting demons and they're all evil. And Wave Redemption. At 11th level, all the Reform Fiend's melee attacks become good aligned. Also good for overcoming uh, damage reduction. And I think, yeah, that's it for unique features for the class. 
but they're really good against evil creatures. Uh, Tiefling, of course, you have to be that for the Reformed Fiend. Hey, that's what I'm doing. It's a redemption arc, but uh, it's going to be Demon to Gold Dragon. Uh, so the Pitborn is what I want to go, plus Demon Spawn fits most thematically with the character I'll be playing. But the idea behind this character, he's going to be a gladiator. He's drawn to the Abyss because of his demonic lineage. I'll be fighting his demonic nature throughout the beginning of the game on the Demon Mythic Path. And then once a Gold Dragon becomes available, uh, that's what we'll be going. I think he'll be played mostly as a good character, but when demon options come up, that's what we'll take. So that's when his uh, bloodline will, will surface, and then eventually we'll go do away with that once we become a gold dragon. Yeah, I'm going to play good. He's going to be a good character, just with demonic influence. So he's going to try to do good. He wants to be good. But again, whenever the de uh, demonic, or I guess demon mythic path options appear, that's what he'll take. Alright, so the uh, Pitborn Demon Spawn. A Pitborn Delight and Destruction, especially while unleashing their havoc on what others consider valuable or precious. Perhaps because of this uh, volatility, others tend to simply defer to Pitborn, an act that uh, often grants them the dominance they crave. We get a plus two to strength and charisma, minus two to intelligence, and a plus two racial bonus to on trickery and perception checks. And you can use a uh, stone call spell once per day. It's whatever. <laughs> and they gain a plus two racial bonus on all rolls to confirm critical hits. So I was thinking about doing Gladiator as my background. But let me look through these again real quick and make sure there's nothing better. Yeah, I really like the uh, Gladiator background. Not because of the bonuses it provides, those don't matter, but for the roleplay aspect. He's, he's going to have 8 in intelligence, he's not going to be very well educated. Definitely not Scholar. Could go with Mugger too. Not that it would change anything, the bonuses still aren't that useful. Yeah. Alright, so Gladiator. Uh, Gladiator adds persuasion to the list of her class skills, which this class already starts with. She also becomes proficient with light armor, tridents, sword swords, and bucklers, which... Whatever. We're going to be using great swords. And then this is just a disclaimer at the bottom. Alright, so we want 19 strength, so we put 5 points into it over the course of the game. Uh, 2 points into dexterity, 4 points into constitution, and the rest into charisma. So 19, 12, 14, 8, 10, and 16. Because I don't plan on putting any extra points into any of these other attributes, just 5 into strength. So we round out at uh, 24. And then here we'll do Athletics and Persuasion. And I'm thinking Weapon Focus to start out and get us a great sword from the get-go. Because that plus one to uh, attack is going to be very useful early on. So weapon focus. Uh, choose one type of weapon. You can also choose unarmed strike, or if you're a spellcaster, melee or ranged touch attack. As your weapon for the purposes of this feat. Benefit, you gain a plus one bonus on all attack rolls you make using the selected weapon. And uh, you can gain it multiple times, but it doesn't stack. You have to select a new weapon each time. But there's some... Uh, Uh, rage themed, at least one rage themed great sword that we'll grab as we play through. Also, I have the wrong thing selected. There we go. Then we'll go Abyssal, of course, because that's where demons reside, and this whole playthrough is fighting his demonic nature. So, generations ago, a demon spread its filth into the essence of your bloodline. While it doesn't manifest in all of your kin, in those moments when you're blood raging, you embody its terrifying presence. Uh, the power of the abyss courses through your veins, causing horrific transformations during your blood rage. Uh, bonus feats we'll get are Cleave, which we will use. 
uh, Great Fortitude, Improved Bull Rush, Improved Sunder, Intimidating Prowess, which will also grab uh, Power Attack and Toughness. A lot of good bonus feats there. And then bonus spells, Raven Feeblement at 7th, Bull Strength at 10th, Rage at 13th, and Stone Skin at 16th. And we'll look at the class card before we start the game as well. I'm kind of... We'll get to that point. Uh, so we are going to go with... Um... Siren Ray, because she embodies redemption. I'm glad to hear it, man. Also, your beard sounds kind of hot. Hey, thanks, Miles. So yeah, we go Siren Ray, uh, because again, this whole th playthrough is... Uh, can't talk today. Uh, themed around redemption, and she... represents redemption. Uh, so Dunter Faithful is the Dawnflower, the Healing Light, and the Everlight. Serenray is a goddess who teaches temperance and patience in all things. Compassion and peace are her greatest virtues, and if enemies of the faith can be redeemed, they should be. Worship of this goddess of healing, honesty, redemption, and the sun began far to the east of the Inner Sea, in the past vast, uh, sorry, uh, Padisha Empire of Kalesh, where worshippers can now be found throughout the world. Domains fire, glory, good, healing, and sun, a favored weapon, scimitar. I was going to go Gorum, but I have played through as Gorum already on my Legend Path. My very first Let's Play. So I didn't want to do that twice, since there are interactions with your deity. Uh, we'll go Count it good here. And I had this all pre-selected. And here we go again. Let me pull up my... Uh, Oh, there it is. All right, so it was body type two is going to be a big slab of meat. I was going to do 13 here. Base three, going to make him look as as draconic as possible. Uh, did I have a scar? I don't think I had a scar selected, but we'll, we'll grab one. He was a gladiator before this. So uh, we'll do, I guess that one. Eye color, red. Hairstyle was four. I'd have 29 as the hair color. Ah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, let's go 20 instead. Uh, horns were five. Uh, the reddish hue to the horns that looks pretty good and the paint was 25 oh sorry it's the uh the jawline i don't know if i want to keep that white or not i think red's a little too on the nose i like it I like the white, I think. Makes it look like an actual jaw. Uh, tattoo. What do I have that? So I have to look at a screenshot for these. I had it all pre-selected uh, before I started the stream. Oh, that's right. I want it to look like scars all over his body. And then I think it was uh, two. Yeah, so they're faint and it kind of looks like he has scars all over his body. And we turned this off. That's the idea behind that, anyway. And clothes color was 13 and... 79. Not that we're going to see it for most of the playthrough, anyway. I'm always ready. I am superior! Yeah, we're going to go with aggressive. I'm not touching that. I didn't even break a sweat. Let's hear you cry! Yeah, aggressive. Yeah, so he always wanted to be good, but he's forced to do evil in the gladiator pits. Um, and of course he rages, so he didn't always have control over himself. So now that he's going to unlock the demonic mythic path, that'll take over when it comes up. And, um... But he, he seeks redemption. He's trying to do good. He came to the Abyss because he was drawn to it because of his demonic lineage, which I, we know, despite the, this actual story, 
Um, that's the reason we're giving him for being here. And uh, being that close to the Abyss, of course, he has to fight back the demonic urge that he has. So he's been fighting it his whole life, and eventually he will succeed and become a gold dragon. And then we're going to do uh, Donatus. So this is a reference to Commodus. Uh, the emperor that would fight in the gladiator pits. And since he worships Serenre, we'll go with uh, Serenith as his uh, birth month. None shall escape! Uh, I thought I could look at the character page here. Uh, so I'll go back here and take a look at it. Alright, so level 1 we get fast movement. A Blood Rager's land speed is faster than is normal for his race by 10 feet. This benefit applies only when he's wearing no armor, light armor, or medium armor, and not carrying a heavy load. Apply this bonus before modifying the Blood Rager's speed to do to any armor worn or load carried. Uh, this bonus stacks with any other bonuses to the Blood Rager's land speed. Yeah, I think uh, I had almost 600 hours in it before I started this. That's over two playthroughs. And of course, we get Blood Rage. A Blood Rager's source of internal power grants him the ability to Blood Rage. At first level, a Blood Rager can Blood Rage for a number of rounds per day equal to 4 plus its constitution modifier. So we'll have... What is it? 14. So yeah, we have uh, 6 castings of Rage. Which won't matter after a certain point anyway. At each level after first, you can Blood Rage for two additional rounds per day. Temporary increases the constitution, such as those gained from Blood Raging or spells like Bear's Endurance. Don't increase the total number of rounds that a Blood Rager can Blood Rage that day, or per day. Uh, the total number of rounds of a Blood Rage per day is renewed after resting for eight hours, although these hours need not be consecutive. While in a Blood Rage, a Blood Rager gains a plus two bonus on melee attack rolls, melee damage rolls, thrown weapon damage rolls, and will saving throws. In addition, he takes a minus two penalty to armor class, which won't matter because we'll be enlarged most of the time and behind the front line. He also gains two temporary hit points per hit die. Uh, these temporary hit points are lost first when a character takes damage, disappear when the Blood Rage ends, and are not replenished if the Blood Rager enters a Blood Rage again within one minute of his previous Blood Rage. Blood Rager falls unconscious, his Blood Rage immediately ends, placing him in peril of death. Blood Rage counts as the Barbarian's Rage class feature for the purpose of feat prerequisites, feat abilities, magic item abilities, and spell effects. Yeah, I considered that. I'm going to try and figure that out. Um, once we get to that point. Right? Yeah, I don't know where Hector's at. He's missing out. Yeah, I know that Mythic Paths lock you into things. I'm going to try and roleplay this <laughs> as I... As I plan to, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm going to read the level 1 stuff, and then as we level up, we'll read other stuff. But just know that you miss on uh, regular damage reduction and gain a uh, specific damage reduction for the Reformed Fiend. Actually, you know, let's go and read everything. It won't take long. So at level 2, we get Uncanny Dodge. The character can react to danger before her senses would normally allow her to do so. She cannot be caught flat-footed, nor does she lose her dexterity bonus to armor class if the attacker is invisible. She still loses her dexterity bonus to armor class if immobilized. A character with this ability can still lose her dexterity bonus to armor class if an opponent successful successfully uses the feint action against her. If a character already has uncanny dodge from a different class, she automatically gains improved uncanny dodge instead. Yeah, the Cavalier run I did is probably, I mean between the two runs I've done so far, has been the most fun. Also the easiest early game, because the Animal Companion makes the early game so much easier. But also be able to charge straight in and take out the spellcasters in the back line makes a lot of the early game's fights significantly more palatable. Right, uh, Blade, blood Sanctuary. At third level, due to the power of his blood, a Blood Rager can stand confidently amid the effects of spells cast by himself or his allies. 
He gets a plus two bonus on saving throws against spells that here an ally casts. Improved Uncanny Dodge, the character can no longer be flanked. This defense denies another rogue the ability to sneak attack the character by flanking her, unless the attacker has at least four more rogue levels than the target does. Hatred Against Evil, at fifth level, Reform Fiend gains a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls against evil creatures while in Blood Rage. This bonus increases by plus one for every five levels. Fantastic bonus for this campaign. Uh, we lose damage reduction and gain damage reduction reformed fiend. At seventh level, reformed fiend gains dr3 except for evil. At tenth level and every three levels thereafter, this damage reduction increases by three points. Damage reduction can reduce damage to zero but not below zero. Are we going the Abyssal Bloodline? Because with the Reform Fiend, you can only be Abyssal or Infernal. You can't select any other Bloodlines. I'm not sure how it works with the uh, Mythic Feet that lets you grab another one. Because we're going de uh, Demon Mythic Path until Gold Dragon. So the whole idea behind this guy is he's fighting is... Uh, well, plus Reform Fiend only has the two. Infernal and... Abyssal, so you have to choose between the two. Now the Abyss specifically. Um, just a gladiator, he was forced to do bad things, and he's seeking redemption. But he's also fighting his demonic lineage throughout the game. Uh, then we get a Greater Blood Rage. At 11th level, when a Blood Rager enters a Blood Rage, the bonus to atta his attack and damage rolls increases to plus 3. The morale bonus that his will saves increases to plus 3. In addition, upon entering a Blood Rage, the Blood Rager can cast a Blood Rager spell he knows of second level or lower as a swift action. The spell must have a touch or self range. This use consumes a Blood Rager spell slot as if he had cast the spell. He must have the spell slot available to take advantage of this effect. A Greater Blood Rage counts as the Barbarian's Greater Rage ability for the purposes of... Yeah, I don't need to read all that. Um, we also get Wave Redemption. At 11th level, all of the Reformed Fiend's melee attacks become good aligned. Indomitable Will. At 14th level, a Blood Rager gains a plus 4 bonus on will saves to resist enchantment spells while Blood Raging. This bonus stacks with all of their modifiers, including the morale bonus and will saves he also receives during his Blood Rage. That's pretty cool. A Tireless Blood Rage. At 17th level, a Blood Rager no longer becomes fatigued at the end of his Blood Rage. And Mighty Blood Rage. At 20th level, when a Blood Rager enters a Blood Rage, the morale bonus to his attack and damage rolls increases to plus 4. And the morale bonus on its will saves increases to plus four. What is the, um... You get that ring from the DLC that adds, uh, the new companion. Last of the Sarkorians. Does that double morale bonuses? Or was it a different bonus, like, uh, circumstance bonuses? I thought it was morale bonuses it doubles. I'm trying to recall, because if so, that's going to be really good with this guy. Uh, furthermore, the spell he can apply to himself at the beginning of a Blood Rage, due to the Greater Blood Rage class feature, is not limited to only spells of second level or lower. Alright, then Abyssal. We've already read that. Uh, we get Claws at first level, which we're not going to use. But at first level, you grow Claws while Blood Raging. These Claws are treated as natural weapons, allowing you to make two Claw attacks as a full attack, using your full base attack bonus. These attacks deal 1d6 points of damage, each 1d4 if you're small, plus your strength modifier. At 4th level, these claws are considered magic weapons for the purpose of overcoming damage resistance. At 8th level, the damage increases to 1d8 points, 1d6 if you're small. At 12th level, these claws become flaming weapons, which isn't super great in this campaign. I would steal an additional 1d6 points of fire damage on a hit. Alright, then we get Claws. We've seen that before. That's just the upgrade at level 4. A Demonic Bulk. At 4th level, when entering a Blood Rage, you can choose to grow one size category larger than your base size as a large person, even if you aren't humanoid. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, bonus Feats. We've read these before, but you get uh, Cleave, Great Fortitude, Bull Rush, Sunder, Intimidating Prowess, Power Attack, and Toughness. Uh, bonus Spell, Raven Feeblement. 
Uh, the next claw upgrade at level 8. Uh, Demon Resistances. At 8th level, you gain resistance 5 to Acid, Cold, and Fire. At 16th level, these resistances increase to 10. Uh, more bonus feats. A bonus spell, Bull Strength. Another upgraded Claws. More bonus feats. Abyssal Blood Rage. At 12th level, bonus to attack and damage rolls granted by your Blood Rage increases by 1, but the penalty to armor class becomes minus 4 instead of minus 2. At 16th level, this bonus increases by 2 instead. At 20th level, it increases by 3 instead. That's... that's awesome. A uh, bonus spell Rage, which is a little redundant on a Blood Rager. You can apply it to one of your party members, I guess. Uh, more bonus feats. Uh, stone Skin as a bonus spell. That's pretty good. A Demonic Aura. At 16th level, when entering a Blood Rage, you can choose to exude an Aura of Fire. The Aura is a 5-foot burst centered on you and deals 2d6 plus your constitution modifier points of fire damage to creatures that end their turns within it. So maybe... You could go like a fire build with this, right? You get Ascendant Element for fire? Wouldn't be the worst idea. Uh, more bonus feats and demonic immunities. At 20th level, you're immune to electricity and poison. You have this benefit constantly even while not blood raging. All this waiting bores. I lead. All right, so that's our character. Let's rock and roll. I heard an owl. My hearing. Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else, like? Oh, I don't know. An infirmary? Or an accommodating ditch? Make room, everyone! Step back! Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? Hmm. The wound looks nasty. Who did this to him? Demons, prelate. We found him barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? Enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. Yeah, considering how paranoid they paint Holrune through a lot of the game, I'm surprised he doesn't suspect anything's up here. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take his weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, Everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. How convenient. Oh, Inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. I won't give up that easily. Hear, hear. That's the Crusader spirit. <laughs> My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendalev. You there! Yes, you! Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful! Go and get Terendalev! So something that's really cool is he uh, actually casts Inflict Wounds if you're playing a Dampier. Which I noticed my uh, first playthrough. Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. I'll get her! Terendalev! Has anyone seen Terendalev? Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. Uh, this is true. I'm a crusader. I came to fight demons. Oh, Iomade saved me from green recruits. They come without plan, without preparation, and they die before they even see their first real battle. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at the utter waste of it all.
My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor man. He has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of him. <clears throat> All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that. So I shall defer to your wisdom, but be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I. Not the defenders of this city. Exposition in this paragraph just makes it sound like he talks really weird. I loose the grudging grip of pain, cast off the veil of suffering flesh, let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. Thank you for helping me. I accept your thanks, but my work is not yet done. Who are you? My name is Terendelev. I am the protector of the city. The fine job you're doing. Are you really a dragon? You don't believe me. Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. What happened to me? I do not know yet. And that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength, but only time will allow you to heal fully. Can I go? Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendelev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. Do we have to say that you're the protector of Canabras and we ask for you? I mean, how many Terendelevs are there? Also, is the sound okay? I thought the music's a little loud, isn't it? How's that? Actually, it still seems loud on my end. I don't know, the music's still loud here. This is the same sound I had for my Let's Plays and stuff. I think it's just the festival that's going to be loud. Alright, i played this game a few times. I don't think I need uh, tutorial tips. I keep that. Oh, let's get Stone Call too. So I did mention I won't read all the dialogue out loud, but I will really uh, read my uh, character's dialogue when it comes up. Yeah, I think uh, the music should quiet down a bit after this area. I'm hoping. Orgus Worm. What a name.
Uh, this is gonna walk by over you here. Fall. There we go. Melia. Yeah, music! It is really solid in this game. Uh, did I walk past Darren? I thought he was here too. Granted, there are a lot of names. Hey, a stranger! Where's Sosu? I didn't see him. Let's see where they wander off to. Onwards. Oh, they just disappear right there. All right. I swore Darren was here, but maybe I was mistaken. I don't know, that line of dialogue from Hover just makes me think of like dialogue from something like Kingdom Hearts. Like you go and talk to an NPC, like that just one line comes up. But it also insinuates something. Oh, was I right next to Darren? So many names, I'm having trouble. Oh man. Alright, hold on, I'm gonna look at it in small sections. I don't need to talk to him, but I like to. Oh, there he is, blending in. Okay. Oh, let's go beat up this thing. He moves around. Or I guess maybe just one after you talk to him. Yeah, because he leaves, he's not part of this uh, next event. Dragon, the next BAM! She was gone. What are you gonna do? Fight or flee? If flee is your plan, let me help you out. I've got a scroll here with a good protective spell. I've seen you somewhere before. Yeah, you have. You owe me your life. I'm the one who found you outside the walls and brought you inside to be healed. I see they've patched you up. Good thing they did it before the attack, or else you'd have been done for. Yeah, she uses a silver dragon. Uh, who's Discari? You must have got a good drubbing around the head, brother. Discari's a demon lord. The most fearsome enemy of all crusaders and all living things, come to think of it. What's the situation in the city? Who knows? 
Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. The place is crawling with demons. Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks! Line's so weird. Uh, care to lend me a weapon? I'll try to fight the demons. I said, just give me a weapon, I'll fight them. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the heart of a demon lord, even. How convenient. Good luck! Try not to get eaten now! No, the that's my TV portrait. Terendalev, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Oh, that's quite the fall. I wonder how we survived it. I'm gonna turn down the master volume a bit. All seems a little loud. Technically, it was two attacks. Oh, holy mother of! Watch your language. You're on stream. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole, but at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? Yeah, Discari's got a bit of a crush. I feel him all right. One say no to a little less feeling in him. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Uh, why should we help her? What kind of a question is that? <laughs> we should help her because we're crusaders, not animals or demons. That's why. All right, hold on. We're going to get you out from under there. Yeah, that's why I said that was convenient, that uh, his crossbow was said to be able to do that. I'll try not to. Now, granted, my first playthrough, part of the uh, that quest was bugged. So, Anevia and... Um, I'm drawing a blank on the orc. Half-orc. But, yeah, that, that quest was bugged out for me. Ugh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Irabeth, yeah, thank you. Oh, well. New start with an I. I kept thinking I'll just I am a make day. myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm a Nevia Tirabade of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that I did not see coming. Now that's your bait. I don't think bade. anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. And she'll be one of the permanent members of our party. Uh, she fits the redemption theme as a pre prior thief turned paladin. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendalev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. 
But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabrace will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? I came here to fight the Abyss. A fellow crusader! <laughs> Welcome, brother. This is great. I would have been happy to have any companion in this. But it's nice to be stuck down here with somebody who's my kind of crazy. It's a good thing you've still got your faith. Because right now, to be totally honest, faith's probably the only thing we do have. Hey, Hatter. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. You have all the DLC. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. We should finish this playthrough before the, uh... Next DLC comes out. That's right, we get our great sword up ahead. You mean the shifter class? I may end up doing a shifter class, but it won't be the... won't be that one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that eventually. Long sword, cold iron great axe. There's our cold iron great sword. I want her to have this and she'll be on the front line. Uh, we shouldn't need this yet. But we'll keep one on hand. The clipping there. I lead. You follow. I want to turn it left scales. Who's there? Ah, oh, he doesn't fit my the theme of the party as well as Sila does. Yeah, my let's play through will be my second to last. It's uh, one of the two I'm looking most forward to playing. Uh, Paladin will be. Um, well, not Paladin. Angel will be my very last one. Because uh, the, the Paladin Let's Play... I'll do a full Let's Play for that once all the DLC are out. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, alright? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. So, yeah, so the Season Pass 1 gives you the first three DLC, and Season Pass 2 will give you the... Uh, Second three DLC. And the third one in that season pass hasn't come out yet. But you'll get it when it releases. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... Naively it now seems that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev, I can't wrap my head around it. What happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. Uh, I... That's a tough call. I haven't finished Rogue Trader yet, so my opinion on it is incomplete. But I'm also a huge 40k fan and have uh, been so for over 20 years, so I, I would say 
Rogue Trader right now mostly because it's 40k. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Yeah, probably not more than a step away from him. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Uh, not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord. Not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Uh, have tried to who said she him, killed him? What could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? <sighs> I mean, does she look like a killer? She's a innocent, helpful companion. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier, and I also possess some knowledge of magic. You haven't played since, uh, the last big patch, so there's gonna be a few things that have changed. Well, no, I think I played the DLC after the big patch, but that doesn't encompass the entire game. So there should be some new stuff for me to discover, uh, especially some of the new mythic feats that I know that they added. Yeah, I've seen some of the new spells, but not all of them. <laughs> well, that you can't do that yet. But uh she may not make it through the entire game because this is focused on redemption and not everybody can be redeemed. Uh do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? But I mean, she died when like every stream last time I streamed the game, so <laughs> or came close to. Yeah, yeah, I saw that they fixed the poison. You can get that. The assassin's actually usable now. Uh, we need to keep moving. It must be way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. <laughs> right. Make sure they're both in front of my character. Well, I guess it doesn't matter yet. Can't enlarge them. A masterwork dagger? How exciting. Save the last one for me. I don't want to waste rages here. Yeah, Onwards. let's pull out my, uh, I'll speak with dead amulet and see what he has to say. None shall oh, escape! <laughs> no, it's pretty popular to do, uh, turn-based. I might do a little bit of turn-based in this playthrough. Mm. The heartbeat quickens. But we'll see. What's on your mind? I wonder. Move out. How much is the dead end? I'm pretty sure this is the dead end. Trader sold well, but they never planned on doing as many DLC. 
I don't think they want to commit to as many. Plus, they have a couple more projects that they're working on. They probably don't want to get bogged down. Head on. I'm playing on core difficulty with uh, one modifier to make it a little bit more difficult. So it's default core, but I have... Um, Additional enemy behavior is turned on, so it makes it custom. I Do not you Do not waver. I would say Wrath of the Righteous over Baldur's Gate 3. The spirits demand your blood. I also haven't finished Baldur's Gate 3 yet, so you my opinion's a little sacrifice. incomplete. Yeah. Also, I want to play Baldur's Gate 3 in a higher difficulty, because balanced is way too easy. Well, they have a uh, Starfighter. What happened in, in the Harpy fight? Cut them to pieces! Right, take you! Blood. Get a lot of critical hits through here. Yeah, I think uh, one of their next games isn't going to be a CRPG. I stick with core because I like the uh, the modifiers, the enemies, and you get everything's zeroed out or multiplied by one. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to play uh, probably two more playthroughs of Baldur's Gate 3, one on Tactician, and then a final run on Honor Mode. When do I? Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait... They might know what's going on up there. <laughs> yeah, I like land too. Uh, demons are laying waste to Canabras. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield mace. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the mace... I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I trust him as much as any other developer. More so than a AAA developer, that's for sure. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Larian doesn't usually do DLC. They'll add stuff to the game after release, like they did with the original Sin 2. They added, like, those little bags and other small content updates. But they don't do DLC. I don't think any of their games have received DLC. I saw some about the Elden Ring DLC, but I try not to look too much into it since I haven't played the game yet. Uh, who are you? Tieflings? You think our forebears sullied themselves by mating with demons like yours did? No, our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the Underground Crusaders, the children of the Crusade's finest. Yeah, I heard that it's also supposed to be more densely packed in the base game. The Score Knight wasn't DLC though, that was a free update. It came with the Enhanced Edition, if I'm not mistaken. Also, this is voice acted. She called me out for being a tiefling myself. Normally the reactive dialogue isn't voice acted. Sadly, Underground Crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. 
because they live beneath Canabras. No matter what you call us, it's not going to stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. I've never heard of underground crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called mongrels. People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. <laughs> That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. <sighs> Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short. Our glories are quickly forgotten, but this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else, and that our lives are not lived in vain. Huh, <sighs> the first Crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. No, Anevia. They're their descendants. They haven't been down here that long. Uh, what are you doing here? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Yep, that wasn't that long ago. I think I just started changing it back in August, or... Yeah, I think it's when I started uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the Holy Sword, we might be able to change the Chief's mind. It wasn't meant to mess with anybody. I did it because the, my channel's theme is red and black. And so, a red border made sense. A black border, I don't think it look very good. But now I try to pick a border that either matches the theme of the playthrough or that matches the, uh, the artwork that I use. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame, and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I think it's actually a little, a slightly different size. Because I can tell the difference, like when I'm using my phone, and I look at it. You can see there's a slight difference in the bar. The coloration is also a little off too, so. I'll pick it up with my teeth work for and it. tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Hey, Hector showed up. Time for us to talk about Wrath of the Righteous, not that other P-word. Maze. Does it really lead to the surface? Yes. There are other ways up, but they are far from here, and after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders. That the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. 
I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. The land's an odd mix of an optimist and a pessimist. I like him. I think he's a, he's a solid companion. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. Yes, oh, whoops. I mean, I missed there are there. other ways up, but they are far from here. When the ceiling and walls started... I've already Don't try to that. blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. I so I clicked on that again. It's my cat pressing into my finger. A sort of holy flame. How did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner a long time ago. 50,000 gongs to be precise. 70 years ago in Uplander time. 50,000 gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Well, specifically his butt. Maybe the angel will dig himself the out cat. and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan, watch your tongue. We'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What, you want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface? So be it. Those are your words, not mine. This one was beyond me. Now what is that? I found... something! What's that there? What do we have here? Move out! Now, what is that? What do we have here? Is this location randomized? I swore it was on the left side of the room, not on the right. Um... Yeah, I guess I'll read the book events. A strange flash pierces the gloom. Adonidas feels drops of searing blood run down his chest. The wound healed by Terendalev reopens and weeps scarlet, but there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears. A cave chamber. This one, or another one entirely. Donatus's heartbeat quickens, and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into his mind. Thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery. They betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect. The people for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are up ahead, in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? They believe I am about to die from their traitorous blows. 
Next to me, a quiet moon. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refused to join the, with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I still have strength, I must... While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Donna doesn't intuit so he can control them somehow. Let's try to... Hmm. We are Blood Ragers, so fiercely call out to the traitors. Yep, it's a new run. Starting from the top. The voice, trembling with pain and rage, carries to the farthest reaches of the cave, ceiling in a strange vision. Why? Why did you betray me and your comrades? What did the servants of the Abyss tempt you with? Blurred shapes, the faces of several mortals, bleed into existence. One of them, a young half-elf with his hair twisted into a knot, responds to the accusations. You and your goddess have given us nothing, Lariel. Nothing. But Lord Iskari will give us everything, and there's no power in the world that will stop his advance. The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster, like a rushing river, and images flash by one after another. A priestess in colorful robes observing the stars. A young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword. A majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet, but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing, and only if you're ready, there is no going back. Races in colorful robes observing the stars. So we know who the paladin is, we know who this is. The priestess, I'm not sure. Uh, there in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirping and rustling emanates from the shadow. The sound piercing like hot irons lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy, and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The awning chest bursts, sorry, the chest wound burns white hot. Donatus's head pounds with pain, and it is no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Lariel who sent this vision, or the one unlucky enough to receive it. Uh, we should have raged before this. Okay, I don't think I've ever actually met her, because uh, every time I've made it to Polara Falls, they've been dead. Or captured. Even on tri the Trickster Path, when you go there early, you can't access the inside yet. Uh, but Donatus is determined to fight off the illusion. The force of the attack, though originating in a vision, is terrifying. But Donatus is stronger. He shakes off the pain and torpor. But alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real, but exists only in this strange vision or memory. But the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Discari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they call Lario. The foolish angel struggling on the rocks, like a fly with its wings torn off, intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old and quavering. Where's your goddess, angel? Where's your self-assured herald? How is it that you are dying here alone, so far from the light of your heaven? A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Lariel. He recognizes who stands before him. He knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand. Bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks, like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash. The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing its, his grip on Lariel's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword, but his last burst of strength plunges it into the rock. Donatus senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing, like a river running dry. The last thing he hears is this. You will kill me, monster. This I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and... Uh, which one's more redemptive? 
I guess because my guy was a gladiator beforehand and was forced to kill people, including possibly innocents. Uh, he now wants to save and protect the innocent. Uh, the vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Donatus does not hear the final words, but he seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from his lips, and with them, something else. The heat blazing in Donatus's, Donatus's chest fades away. The edge of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Donatus sees the flaming sword in his hand, or rather its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes, the light is drawn into his hand. Donatus senses that it will return, all he need do is call it. Hey! Are you alright? You were kinda... glowing just now. That... that was it. The light of heaven, but how? What did you do with it? Where did it go? You saw it too. The traitors. The dying girl. It's only us here. Your group. You, me, Windu, and... The light of heaven that sort of got, uh, sucked into you? Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kinda need it. Take it easy, lad. We haven't even had a first date yet. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous. And when I'm upset. And when I'm happy. A anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sull. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe and go into the maze and we'll get back our kin. And what if he can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. I think I saw the memories of Lario, the angel who died here. Lario? That really was Lario? The angel from the legends. The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. You. Thousands of gongs and no one's been able to touch it. And now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. Now, now, Wentuag, don't be a sore loser. He is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before him, along with the angel's name and all that other stuff. Because he doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. I feel like this is a little out of place considering I'm a tiefling. But on top of that, I'm a blood rager tiefling with the abyssal bloodline. So... If they weren't chosen because they're mongrels, then I would have been chosen because I'm a abyssal bloodline tiefling. Yeah, exactly, Lava Beard. <laughs> I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but you and Sul, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. Now, I mean, their situation's a little different, but... Yeah, I mean, it's very, very similar. Alright, uh, it seems I can control it. Reveal the light of heaven. That is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing! Heaven has truly blessed you. <laughs> Give him the old razzle-dazzle. Got shiny fingers. This power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? 
Help us save ours. <laughs> Without them, we won't survive. And then, the perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. I'll lead us to your chief and I'll decide if I'm going to help you or not. <laughs> Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. I mean, that's how the game basically phrased it. Can't hide from me. So I may make one exception to the taking the uh, demon mythic path options. Well, no, because if I select that, I can't select it later, right? So I'm pretty sure at the end of the shield maze, you can only select whichever one you selected prior to the shield mage. maze. I think siding with land makes more sense because I am trying to do good. The mongrel did it. Protection from evil. Is that because I chose to protect the um I, I chose the uh, protect the innocent dialogue option during the book event. I don't remember getting that otherwise. Yeah, that's what I thought. I so I, you follow. I want to go, demon. We'll see. It doesn't really matter what I go as long as I get uh, gold dragon by the end. Yeah, I think we have to go demonic, but we can always grab Lan at the end of the shield maze and swap him out for Wendwag once we realize she's not good, right? So I think you take the demonic option, you select the other demonic option at the end of the shield maze, and then there's a dialogue option that's not dictated by your mythic path. You can choose the other companion. Get another <laughs> Go for their hearts! Let's hear you cry! Run them through! Into the fray! Yeah, I'm just- I'm trying to justify roleplay decisions, and siding with Wendewag early on, it, it's really hard to justify that, even if I'm trying to take the, the demonic mythic path options, because there's no, like, demon temptation there. And once I read the dialogue, I'll try to come up with well, the this didn't go well. reason for it. Who actually has the most armor class? 19 versus 21. A All right. bright future awaits us. Let me draw the oh, first Beg me to stop. The inheritor Oh wow. No match for me. This will leave a bruise. Right, well that was rough. <laughs> uh, this one, no, because we're not going to have a very optimal party going through. I'm going to have to use every buff that I can get my hands on. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, maybe right there. I heed the voice of the spirits. All right, we don't have that much further we I have to go before we make it to the something Mongrel's town. Yeah, Thanks, not, this one will be a no buff run because awesome, again, land. not my optimal party. You can trust me. 
I will see. Onwards. You're almost to the end. I don't need to use any potions yet. Are we in trouble yet? Save the last one for me. I was turning AI off. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. No glory without risk. I'll cut you wide open. <laughs> Did you see that? find trouble? No, they did. You won't survive me. The light take you. I'll rip you apart. Out of my way. The spirits way. demand your blood. Endure this. Let's have the big one first. They'll beg me to stop. I'm done with you. I believe miniature giant space hamsters are from a astral plane, are they not? Or from their own plane? They're not from a planet. Alright, she doesn't want me to show the light of heaven to soul. Uh, Lana showed that the light should be shown to the mongrels. Yeah, I mean, if the whole tribe goes, they could easily make it through the shield maze. Yeah, I thought you considered the mongrels to be great warriors. Uh, don't you want to save the kids lost in the maze? Alright, I'll think about it. Let's go. Zulov, how's it going, man? It's been a long time. Alright, did I miss any loot? I don't think so. I always feel like there's a hidden door here, but there's not. But it looks awfully suspicious. first impression of the Mongrel village is of a squalid dump with the odors to match. I'm glad I don't have to voice act this guy. I'm trying to add the SH sound to all the all the words. Ah, Lan, always dreaming, always talking. You're too hasty. Too hasty for your own good.
Okay, so it's not actually a, a demonic option here. It's just chaotic. So did they change that? I swore this used to be the demon option, right? I never... I, I sided with her last time, but I wasn't... Did I choose it because it was only chaotic? Because I was playing the trickster. So hey, I can still do this inside with land. That's really convenient. Okay, then I was I was just mistaken. I misremembered. I, I thought it was angel or demon. But it's just chaotic. Because I knew I took it last time when I was playing my chaotic trickster. Uh, I'm trying to go good, but with the demon mythic path, I know that that'll eventually make it so I can't select good alignment, um, which will lock me out of my current class. But we'll figure it out. There's always a way, right? And then once I get to Gold Dragon, I can always re uh, respec back to my other class anyway. Uh, is there someone else from the surface here? <laughs> there he is. Mail and or Hale and Hardy like and Prim is a peacock, just like me. Sh not good. Too many uplanders. Sh not good, sh not right. You're not one of us. Yeah, okay. I will help you find the lost mongrels in the maze. But you quit hoping for a magical sword to appear. What does that block out these two? I don't know if I've ever taken that one. Uh, it's still gonna be chaotic good. You can still be chaotic good as a gold dragon. Because you can be, uh, like, one alignment off. So, like, as a gold dragon, you could be, uh, think neutral good, lawful good, and chaotic good. So if I select this, is it gonna block that out? I don't really care if I'm lawful or not. Yeah, yeah, they are typically lawful good, but the mythic paths give you a little bit of wiggle room. No, I have taken this... Oh. Sorry, I had a cough. Um, I have taken that before, but Lance sounds so dejected, it's so hard not to side with him here. But yeah, a land speaks the truth. Reveal the light of heaven. Oh... Yeah, I was just making sure I don't burn the bridge. It's not a big deal. I can always make up roleplay wise later. Um, I mean, I'm not really responsible for their decisions. Yeah, we have the blessing of the angels. We'll survive and help the young tribesmen. I mean, not quite. Uh, double stuff to Oreos. I think gold dragons hoard other gold dragons, but they're constantly trying to hoard the gold dragon that's hoarding all the other gold dragons. It's a very violent affair. Hey, we leveled up. Right, let me check one thing real quick. So, because I, again, I might have to stray from my current class, and I may go Dragon Disciple. We just need Arcane Spells, uh, first level Arcane Spells and Knowledge Arcana 5. So I'm going to put some points in Knowledge Arcana. So that if I do have to deviate from this class, I have a backup. 
already ready to go. Plus, it's one of our... Uh... No, is it? Knowledge Arcana is not. What was the other one? It is Knowledge Arcana, but our intelligence is uh, at minus one modifier, so... See, so yeah, I will do that. Oh, we get another one. Uh, even better. Another point of Knowledge Arcana. The athletics will mostly be covered by probably Sila. We also get Uncanny Dodge. The character can react to danger before her senses would normally allow her to do so. She cannot be caught flat-footed, nor does she lose her Dexterity Bonus to Armor Class if the attacker is invisible. She still loses her Dexterity Bonus to Armor Class if immobilized. A character with this ability can still lose her Dexterity Bonus to Armor Class if an opponent successfully uses the feint action against her. The character already has Uncanny Dodge from a different class. She automatically gains improved Uncanny Dodge instead. Yeah, Land's not going to be a permanent member of the party, though. Is it fit the redemption theme I'm going for? So, it's going to be my main character and Sila, because Sila is a thief turned paladin. She fits the redemption theme. Um, Ember, she's trying to redeem everybody. She obviously fits the, the mold. I think Wolgif will be my arcane caster. Uh, because he leaves, he comes back, and he redeems himself by returning to the party. And, um... Social, kind of? Uh... With him and his brother, because I think eventually his brother will be in the party as well. And, um... Who is the other one? Drawn a blank. Yeah, the succubus. Yeah, Arushalai. Thank you. Um, so Rushlai will be in the party with everyone else with until we get Trevor, and then I might I'll try to find a way to make Trevor fit. But if we can't use him in this playthrough, we'll we'll fit him into another uh, thematic run. Yeah, so Land won't be with us permanently. Well, he'll be with us, but not part of the A team. He'll be benched most of the playthrough. All right, so Sila gets uh, Lay on Hands. Beginning at second level, a paladin can heal wounds, her own or those of others, by touch. Each day she can use this ability a number of times equal to half her paladin level plus her charisma modifier. With one use of this ability, a paladin can heal 1d6 hit points of damage for every two paladin levels she possesses. Using this ability is a standard action, unless a paladin targets herself, in which case it is a swift action. Alternatively, a paladin can use this healing power to deal damage to undead creatures, dealing 1d6 points of damage for every two levels the paladin possesses. Using Lay on Hands in this way requires a successful melee touch attack, and doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity. Undead do not receive a saving throw against this damage. And Divine Grace. At second level, a paladin gains a bonus equal to a charisma bonus, if any, on all saving throws. And uh, Athletics, a uh, minus three. Gosh. What a nasty penalty. Um... Yeah, we'll lean her into Knowledge World. What are her, uh... Yeah, World, okay. We'll, we'll make it work. We need someone to do Religion checks. Which I guess Socio will eventually do. I'm trying to plan ahead. Our Persuasion fits. And Knowledge World, I guess. Alright, Camellia. She gets a Hex. Um, ability and trickery. <laughs> um, evil eye is really good starting out. Uh, ice plant's not bad. In fact, I think I'm going to start with that and try to make her into more of a tank. Because both her and Sila need to survive against the ice elemental. So ice plant, this hex grants the shaman a plus two natural armor bonus to armor class. Uh, the effect leaves the shaman's skin thick and stiff to the touch. Doubt is the heart's greatest challenge. Alright, so uh, Lan, he's a hunter background, worships Iomade. It's combat reflexes at level 1. You make a number of additional attacks of opportunity per round equal to your dexterity bonus. With his feet, you may also make attacks of opportunity while flat footed. Uh, he has improved unarmed strike. You're considered to be armed even when unarmed. You can make unarmed attacks that deal 1d3 bludgeoning damage if medium, 1d2 if small. Uh, armor class bonus. While unarmored and unencumbered, the monk adds his wisdom bonus, if any, to his armor class and CMD. 
In addition, a monk gains a plus one bonus to armor class and CMD at fourth level. This bonus increases by one for every four monk levels thereafter, up to a maximum of plus five at 20th level. These bonuses to armor class apply even against touch attacks or when the monk is flat footed. He loses these bonuses when he is immobilized or helpless, when he wears any armor, when he carries a shield, or when he carries a medium or heavy load. Unarmed Strike. At first level, a monk gains improved unarmed strike as a bonus feat. The damage dealt by a medium monk's unarmed strikes increase with level. 1d6 at levels 1 through 3, 1d8, 4 through 7, 1d10, 8 through 11, 2d6 at uh, 12 through 15, 2d8 uh, from 16 to 19, and 2d10 at level 20. And if the monk is small, that's reduced. If the monk is large, it's increased. Among proficiencies, monks are proficient with the club, crossbow, light or heavy, dagger, hand axe, javelin, comma, nunchaku, quarter staff, sai, sword, short sword, short spear, shuriken, a uh, are Siangams even in the game? A slaying spear and any weapon with the monk's special weapon quality. Monks are not proficient with any armor or shields. When wearing armor, using a shield or carrying a medium or heavy load, monk loses his armor class as well as his fast movement and flurry of blows ability. Uh, there's a question. A uh, CMD, where is it at? I can hover over it and explain it. Here we go. CMD is Combat Maneuver Defense. So each character and creature have a Combat Maneuver Defense or CMD that represents its ability to resist combat maneuvers, which are things like a uh, feint, uh, bull rush, things like that. Uh, disarm. A creature's CMD is determined using the following formula. A CMD equals 10 plus base attack bonus plus strength modifier. Uh, plus dexterity modifier, plus special size modifier, miscellaneous modifiers. A uh, creature adds any circumstance, deflection, dodge, insight, luck, morale, profane, and sacred bonuses it has armor class to its CMD. Any penalties to a creature's AC also apply to its CMD. A flat footed creature does not add its dexterity bonus to its CMD. Yeah, so any sort of like special attack uh, has to go up against uh, CMD or combat maneuver defense. Any, uh, any combat maneuvers. Alright, uh, Perfect Strike. You must declare that you're using this feat before you make your attack roll. Thus, a failed attack roll ruins the attempt. You can roll your attack roll twice and take the higher result. You may attempt a perfect attack once per day for every four levels you have attained, but see Special. Special. A Zen Archer or Quarterstaff Master Monk receives Perfect Strike as a bonus feat at first level, even if he does not meet the prerequisites. The Monk may attempt a Perfect Strike attack a number of times per day equal to his Monk level, Plus one more time per day for every four levels he has in classes other than Monk. And I think I'm going to play a Quarterstaff Master for my Aeon run. But we'll see. A point blank shot. You get a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons at ranges of up to 30 feet. A Zen Archer weapon proficiency. Zen Archers are proficient with longbows, shortbows, composite longbows, and composite shortbows. In addition to their normal weapon proficiencies. And Flurry of Blows. Starting at first level, a Zen Archer can make a flurry of blows as a full act attack action, only when using a bow, even though it is a ranged weapon. He may not make a flurry of blows with his unarmed attacks or any other weapons. A Zen Archer does not apply his strength bonus on damage rolls made with flurry of blows unless he is using a composite bow with a strength rating. A Zen Archer's flurry of blows otherwise functions as normal for a monk of, the, of his level. A Zen Archer cannot use rapid shot or mini shot when making a flurry of blows with his bow. And at level 2, he gets Way of the Bow. At 2nd level, a Zen Archer gains Weapon Focus as a bonus feat with one type of bow. At 6th level, the monk gains Weapon Specialization with the same weapon as a bonus feat, even if he does not meet the prerequisites. And Zen Archer bonus feat, we'll just select that as we go. Athletics, Mobility, and Perception. Uh, I think, I mean, they still have, know who the gods and goddesses were before they were forced to live underground. They have all that information from before. Plus, Lan, at one time, did live on the surface with his family. He wasn't always underground. And also, I do agree, it's a pretty common sentiment that it doesn't, like, the Zen Archer doesn't make as much sense for Lan. Um, something like the Hunter or something like that would be more fitting, considering his background. Since he was a hunter for the tribe. 
Uh, you don't want Rapid Shot because you can't use that with Flurry of Blows. Uh, but pre Precise Shot is a fantastic and required feat on ranged characters. Uh, you can shoot or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee without taking the standard minus four penalty on your attack roll. And uh, Way of the Longbow. I like uh, keeping Roosh alive with the short bows and giving land the long bows. So you get Weapon Focus, which is a plus one bonus on all attack rolls you make using the selected weapon. All right, Wendwag is a hunter, worships the Moss too. She has precise shot. Uh, you can shoot or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee without taking the standard minus four penalty on your attack roll. We don't really need to read her stuff since she's about to leave our party. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to use it as prerequisite, that's fine, but... Definitely not a priority, and typically you can't use it. Alright, so fighter proficiencies. A fighter's proficient with all simple and martial weapons, and with all armor and shields. Pretty straightforward. And point blank shot, you get a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons at ranges up to 30 feet. Uh, she gets a bonus combat feat, and bravery. Starting at second level, a fighter gains a plus one bonus and will saves against fear. This bonus increases by plus one for every four levels beyond second. Not required, especially with the Paladin in the party. It's a little redundant, but... No harm done. Uh, we'll do Perception and... I don't know. Athletics. Again, her stuff doesn't matter. I'm gonna do Weapon Focus and... Does she have a Shortbow equipped? That's also a longbow. You need me. Good. So, in case we do end up recruiting her later, let's uh, because again, this is redemption, so we may end up bringing her into the party. Let's go and grab throwing axe because that's where she'll eventually go. I I might do okay at it. I'm kind of, I'm reading things quickly here for the stream because that's not the focus. But, uh, I was recommended to do voice acting by one guy. And another person said I should do, um, like audiobook readings. You follow. Honestly, my voice gets a little, uh, worn out. Uh, tell me about mongrels. Well, thank you. I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing it, but I'll keep it in my back pocket. They ruined him as a child. Now, it's going to take me probably a couple streams to get used to playing this again, because uh, I've been playing, well, two turn-based games recently. And plus, Baldur's Gate 3 just plays different in general. So I'm a little rusty. What have you been saying for years, Hector? My next playthrough, I'm not sure... I usually decide like halfway through the current playthrough what I'll do next. I'm trying to do them in the order of what I think will be least interesting for me and work my way to the most interesting. Except for my first Let's Play. I thought Legend was the bee's knees. But then uh, Trickster, Gold Dragon, um, and a maybe demon next. But then I do partial demon here. So maybe I'll do a Zada next. Kind of mix it up. That'll be uh I'll be playing a Scald for my Azada playthrough. Oh. Well thank you, Hector. <laughs> maybe you're the person that I was referring to for one of those. 
The missus also thinks I, I would do good with audiobooks. Your name tells me nothing. Who are you? <laughs> He's referring to Darren here. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Spaniard. Yeah, you gotta appreciate Horus being willing to call Discari uh, an accursed beetle. I'm not familiar with Dwarfden. Mortismal I am. I almost met him in person one time. Uh, he was invited to go to the Gen Con with us for the Rogue Trader uh, motion. But he turned it down. Oh, I still don't know who that is. I think the only Jordan I know. Well, I didn't go to school with the Jordan. And there's, of course, Michael Jordan. I did see plays last uh, last season he played before he retired. And he was on the Washington Wizards. And he's playing against the Bulls. It was a pretty cool thematic game. Back when I was still into basketball. Hey look, he's re re yeah, referencing my gishness. You look like someone who can swing a blade as well as cast a spell. I'm very gratified to see it. A good journalist will be a fine companion on the way to the surface. That's good. I like seeing uh, YouTubers do well. So he, he's a lore guy? He just goes over the lore? Or what does he do? Yeah, I wonder why she wants to help him. I mean... Yeah, 2,000 gold. Why would I not? He was bragging about how wealthy he was, so... And we can use this for the greater good. Alright, deal. Well, let's do money first. He's gonna refuse us. Yeah. Alright, deal. All right, we're getting a nice little chunk of change once we get up to the surface. Yeah, I thought about doing, uh, like, focusing more on builds, but instead of, like, fully optimal builds, it'd be, like, role-playing builds for the games that I play. Move out. But, I don't know, I just like doing my Let's Plays too much. And time is becoming scarcer, so it's hard to try and branch out, do new stuff, and create new series. But I've always been a, a fan of doing, like, thematic uh, characters over fully optimal characters. It's all about the roleplay. It makes you things more exciting, right? Like, your character has definite weaknesses. But you could argue my current character doesn't really have weaknesses, right? His intelligence doesn't do anything besides give you skill points, which, if you have the, the appropriate companions, doesn't matter. Onwards. Yep, all current DLC will be in this uh, this playthrough because I've already completed the DLC individually, so whatever rewards you get will be added. Hmm. Just missing the one DLC that hasn't been released yet. Oh, I may have missed. Oh, sorry, Matthew, Move I missed your out. comment. Head on! 
Blood Rager. It's a mix of uh, Blood Rager and Paladin. Kind of. Maybe more of like a, I don't know, Sanctified Slayer or something. You get bonuses to uh, attacks against evil creatures and uh, it's a bonus damage reduction against everything besides evil creatures. Now you really have to give up. Oh, and you're also limited to um, Abyssal and Infernal Bloodlines. Onwards. All you give up is regular damage reduction. And you get more bonuses than you lose. Unlike my last playthrough, where I played Imitator, and you lose more than you gain. Including the Capstone ability that you can't use because you don't have Study Target. So you can't use the uh, Master Slayer, whatever it's called. Hey, Federico! That's yeah, good to be back. No, donuts are a uh, strength, they're not a weakness. Every time I eat a donut, I feel much stronger. And Homer Simpson could probably shatter mountains. Yeah, that's all I could think about when I was in boot camp. I didn't even really eat Krispy Kreme donuts because we don't have like a, a local Krispy Kreme store where I'm at. I didn't really eat them uh, prior, but the whole time I was in boot camp, all I could think about were Krispy Kreme donuts, Reese cups, and chocolate milk. So when I got my the, the one day toward like uh, it's called Marine Day when you go out and can kind of wander, go to the PX and stuff, I bought all that, ate it all, and threw it all up. Yeah, Gold Dragon is the plan. It's a, it's a redemption run, so everything's going to be themed about, around redemption. All my companions, um, choices I make, things like that. No, that was a few years ago. I was in boot camp in 2011, towards the end of it. I was in boot camp through all the major holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas... New Year's. But yeah, Krispy Kreme, I was obsessed over it. I really haven't eaten it since. Guess my character really doesn't want to talk to Horgus. There we go. Yeah, we weren't allowed to have chocolate milk. We're only allowed to drink the the blue power raid because I was in third battalion, and uh, third battalion's color is blue, so the drill instructors made us just drink blue power raid. But I've always liked chocolate milk. I just it's good stuff. Yeah, so you can see all the foreshadowing here. 
the chief kind of, he didn't intentionally do it, but, like, oh, you have to go through the maze for a specific reason, and I wonder why that is. Oh, there's a demon at the end that's corrupting all you guys. But, they had another much easier way up top, and the chief filled it in. <laughs> this is so mean. The first thing I see when I wake up is your hideous face. Not the best start to the day. No, I haven't done Original Sin 2 yet. Um, after I finish Baldur's Gate 3, I'm going to play a couple shorter games, and then I'm going to do an entire Divinity franchise uh, playthrough. Starting with the original. And take care, Matthew. Long day. You didn't work today. But thanks for stopping by. All right. Anyway, it's a tiefling dialogue. Oh yeah, we get to talk to like the uh, the tieflings and stuff as a tiefling. To see a fair bit uh, more content. Oh wow, he thought I was gonna be a demon spire or cultist because as a tiefling. How? Inappropriate land. Are you saying that I've never been to the dentist, Matthew? Because I have. I used to like going to the dentist until one time I got a dental hygienist who was a sadist. I don't know what her problem was. But man. Ever since then I've been a little hesitant. A little, little trepidatious when I go. But before that I always loved it. Yeah, I'm curious if they'll let us actually just join them. I wonder how that's going to play out. If we get something special from them, like a special reward. Because you get, uh, like, the stuff from uh, the, the bartender at Defender's Heart for being a Dampier. Head on! Oh yeah, the uh, merchant. Uh, she should be outside the, uh... Should be outside the... Oh, there, there she is. Never mind. Yeah, I was, uh, they used the uh, gas on me when I was, got my wisdom teeth pulled, so I don't remember any of it. I was eating burgers, like, the next day, like, I recovered really quick. Give those to land. Yeah, I've had one cavity. Onwards. But I have this. I had like a, I have a weird gap between a couple of my teeth, and I think. Stuff just kept getting stuck in there. That led to me getting a cavity right there. Small, like... It might be a chipped tooth back there, actually. Can you find that sword here yet? That I found last time? Or is it only when you come back? I found it. It was marked as a quest item, but I have no idea what it's for.
Seven pulled teeth. That's rough. Only had the uh, regular wisdom teeth pulled. Let me go back over this way and check this side one more time. This is a unique sword that you find here, but it might not be till chapter two. Yeah, because we can't get over that way. I will help where I can. Oh yeah, do I want to buy anything from, uh, what's-her-face? I sold stuff, I didn't even look to buy anything. I'll get, uh, I can't get that. I just gonna get all the healing potions, might that be the worst idea. A uh, blur could come in handy for that fight against the. Elemental. Just buy one for Sila. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I tend to do now, too. Uh, heading into the shield mace. Especially since you... And I feel like the value this early on is just... It's so significant. This one potion typically heals you to full. We are the light! They are the darkness! All these guys ran through here and they didn't take out that guy, that lizard for us. Shoon, Shoon will attack. Yeah, we can do that. Move out. We'll go take a do gander. Not do not waver. I'm superior. The light take you. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. <laughs> Did you see that? I'll cut you wide open. <laughs> <laughs> the spirits demand your blood. Spirits demand your blood. I mean, this is where the sword's at. Head on. Or not. Oh, Hatter, watch your language, man. So maybe assign a moderator. Burn this chat to the ground. I swear to I am a day. Onwards. I usually, I don't really need a mod. Plus my, I, I do have a mod. Uh, he hasn't shown up for a while. But uh, the chat's usually slow enough pace where I can keep up with it. You know, I'm not, I'm not that popular. You guys are the uh, at the hipster Move stage out. of my channel growth. Like, yeah, I used to watch him before he was popular. I hope you appreciate this. All right, gonna stick in here. There's a few enemies on the far side. I we will win this war. 
I'm all I don't think there's any buffs I need. I turn that on. What's on your mind? I wonder. No reason to pause. I'll watch your back. I'm losing my temper. Yeah, I may have uh, about fixing her. Maybe not this time. Yeah, I romance Camellia in my last run. I, I don't know if I could justify it in any any run besides the trickster run. Maybe a demon run. All right, so we want to send Camellia over here to tank these stand. other guys. No uh, Donatus may take this guy way. out with a single charge. A bright future awaits us. Well, do it this way. All this waiting for is always be ready for the worst. They will break against our resolve. Yeah, worked out flawlessly. Let's hear you cry. The inheritor, guide you my won't blade. survive me. Oh, that's a wizard. No Didn't take that guy out next. Without risk. You are today's sacrifice. Run them through. <laughs> out of my way. Go for their heart. Oh wow, the nimble wizard. Yeah, Trickster won. It was fun, uh, though the imitator class is very suboptimal. I'll give it that. It is not, not an optimal class at all. Because you lose out on a lot of default damage, because you give up half your sneak attack dice to get eventually more damage with uh, sneak attack dice, but it's for a finite amount of rounds per day. There's a few other stances you can use too, but there's really no reason to use anything besides either the uh, rogue stance or the fighter stance with extra BAB. Then you can't use your capstone ability, which... This one was beyond me. Oh no! Really? 90% chance? There we go. Helpful, am I not? Um, it's crazy you can't use your capstone ability. They didn't give him a different one. Because the capstone ability or feature requires you to use a uh, study target, which the imitator doesn't have access to. Yeah, there's a, there's a handful of people I watch. Like, if Get Daved ever uploads anything, I'm, I'm right there, I'm watching it. Pay attention. I mean, he was the inspiration that started me down this, uh, you know, YouTube path. I am helpful, am I not? I have, uh, 588, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, 588.4, not including this stream. Rely on me. I will help where I can. Battles await. Spells not working like that. Everyone is mortal in this world. Especially we will win this when war. I'm around. I heed the voice of the spirits. I'll cut you wide open! I am superior! Hey! Fighting Cowboy, I watch a little bit of his stuff. But, I don't know, a lot of the games he plays don't really interest me the way they used to. I watch a little Christopher Odd, Get Daved, uh, Ultimark Gaming.
Uh, who was the oldest? Alright, so we just learned something new from that book. Is this the one with the glaive bonus? Yeah, plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls with the glaive. So I'll probably use a glaive for a little bit once we find the one I at the you appreciate this. end of this uh, labyrinth. Onwards. Hey, take care, Hector. Now, what is that? But uh, sometimes I don't watch people because they play the new games and I'm like, oh, I want to play these blind, so I have to avoid watching them. Uh, yellow, blue, red, yellow. I missed this completely my first, uh, first time through the shield maze. I think I had my camera angled a different way. Alright, so we have a couple corrupted mog rules. I think it's just the group in this corner, right? Maybe a third one somewhere. Open your heart to me. Together, we stand. Actually, let's do this. What's on your mind? This way. I wonder. Let's move already. Are we in trouble yet? Yet another obstacle. Yeah, there's a third one. I was right. The light take you. Yeah, I meant to do it from uh, the the loot screen, but I forgot. But yeah, I know, I know you can do it from the just hitting the info thing. Uh, did you know him? Why would Mongrels attack us? Aren't we all on the same side? No, I just... I'm used to seeing uh, Reed from Baldur's Gate 3. I didn't see Reed, so I panicked and just exited out of it. <laughs> so, still shaking off the rust for Pathfinder. Then after the fact, I was like, oh yeah, I just hit info. Uh, seems like this shield maze of yours is crawling with cultists. How did they get here? Now let's go. This place might be even more dangerous than we thought. I am helpful, am I not? Yeah, I'm still enjoying it quite a bit. I think, uh, looking forward to recording the next episode. Move out! Oh, that's right, this is the champion. Um, no one stands in my way! A bright future awaits You can us. trust me. No reason to pause. All this waiting bores me. Save the last one for me. <laughs> Endure this. <laughs> I'll exhaust you right away. Oh, well. I thought I could use it for a round and then be exhausted. This pain is excruciating. <laughs> Yeah, 5th edition took me a little getting used to when I played Solasta. But it, it's grown on me a little bit. I like I, I like it. Head on. 
I like the uh, the smaller scale of a lot of the the mechanics. So like level one spells will be useful throughout the entire game because you can only well Baldur's Gate three kind of did away with it, but with the attunement system, you only have so many magical items equipped, which at first I couldn't stand. Like I'm finding all this magical equipment, I can't use it because you can only attune three items at a time. This is terrible. But it's like, oh, well, I can still use all these low level spells. They're still viable. Because I can only use so much magical equipment. So it. I think it adds a little bit more versatility. And I quite like it. Uh, I think I'll just do the one right now. Yeah, yeah, just, just figured that out. Which is okay, once we get our first, uh, mythic feat, I'll have to worry about that anymore anyway. Onwards. Just turn it on and leave it on. To call it, uh, Endless Rage. Yeah, I quite enjoyed the loss. I still want to play through all the campaigns on um, Cataclysm with my dream team. What do we have here? I am helpful, am I not? <laughs> if I get endless rage, then it. Doesn't matter anyway, right? I don't have to ever turn it off. I hope you appreciate this. But yeah, I, I think I'd seen that somewhere before. Your recommendation. Move out. Oh man. Okay. Well, I mean, I have Sila with me. I mean, they use that? her mercy to get rid of my fatigue. There's an item. That uh, makes you immune to fatigue, isn't there? There's a. Uh... I don't remember what it is. Head on. Rely on me. Okay, yeah. Uh, There's a Crusader reward. So I might end up using that. I don't know, we'll see. We will win There's other rage wins. gear that I may end up using instead. Like Alright, hold on. I gotta reposition so I can charge. I'm losing my temper. Together we stand. I heed the voice of the it should work. Is it flawed? Did we find trouble? No, they did. All right, he no cannot be targeted by everybody. He won't last way. long. Whew. Most stuff. All right. Make every strike count. Let's hear you cry. The spirits demand your blood. Yeah, I'm curious how I'm going to handle, because I, I don't have it fully planned out. I'm going to handle the demon mythic path. I push him a large person. Oh yeah, I forgot to slot her spells. That one extra cure light wounds would have been very handy here. But I'll probably go Dragon Disciple. In all honesty, so it also fits the gold dragon theme. All this waiting bores me. Open your heart to me. A bright future awaits us. Meditate on your mistakes. The heart be oh, make you feel better. <laughs> so this is how it feels. Into the fray!
Oh, I never played Oracle, so I didn't know that anyway. Why would I want to go Legend? I mean, I've done Legend before, but for Marshall. Legend does really well with Marshall, because your BAB keeps going up. He just turns into an absolute monster in the field. But Legend doesn't really improve your spellcasting. If you go uh, certain classes and go into like Lich or Angel, and you can uh, combine your spellbook. No reason let's to pause. What's on your mind? I wonder. All right. Um, let's use the wand because potions we can drink in combat. Yeah, I know that's the optimal route to take with the uh, dragon disciple. And it really is just the, the plus four to strength, because it's untyped and it stacks with everything. Yeah, what... I don't remember what level you are when you reach Dresden. Isn't it like level 12? Move out! Battles await. I will help where I can. Mike after the ranger first here. Have Sila charge uh, that did guy. I mess up again. Head on. We will win this war. Someone must be blocking me. Well. <sighs> Rely on me, the inheritor. Guide my blade. You fall. A bright future awaits us. Together, you can trust we me. stand. No one stands in my way. You've crossed Do the wrong line. Do not waste. You won't survive me. Oh, oh well. Okay. Well, she's down. But we can use one scale. I can't use the other one, so have to be careful going forward. I usually do all the optional content, so should be maxed out. That was level twelve, but it has been a while. I'll watch your back. Yeah, I should have had Sila charge in first there. I that's fine. Oh, this is some pathetic heals. There we go. Wanna be all in the green. Actually, I should probably just go ahead and top off. We're about to fight the water elemental. I'll go a little bit further. Where I deal with that guy. I believe it's this door. Or is it the one down there? Yeah, this is a empty, Pay attention. empty room. I am helpful, am I not? Be more helpful if you didn't keep dying. Well, I mean, it's only been the one time. And Matthew right. missed it. I'm not going to cast that many spells. It's going to be, uh... Well, buffs, of course. Let me draw the first blood. Run them through! <laughs> the light take you! this 
I mean, ideally, I go 20 levels of a Reformed Fiend, but... Over there! We'll see how it goes. <laughs> no, I am not a huge fan of MMOs. I, at one time, considered playing Final Fantasy XIV, but... I saw the time to commit to an MMO. I did play through uh, the Old Republic on the channel. Created it as a linear single player experience, though. All this waiting for. I try Stone Call over here. But I don't want to block myself off from the Rangers, so maybe not. I heed the voice of the spirit. <laughs> Yeah, this is one of the fights after you summon my buffs. What's on your mind? But I still like I wonder. games where I feel like I have to play to stay caught up with everything. I'm losing my temper. I already have that active. Um, I may save this. I could open up with this. Might be the worst idea. Move out. Battles await. None shall escape. Today's sacrifice! Out of my way! Make every strike count! I'll just sit here. Don't worry about me. I don't know if this was the best idea. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. But we'll see. Hey, two hit points. This is not the end. Go for their heart. So this is how it feels. All right, land. What you got, buddy? <laughs> He's got decent armor class. I'm gonna clutch this out. Survive me. Probably not, though. I could do more healing potions, but it's probably not worth it. This was. All right, first wipe. Take care, Hatter. All right, let's charge in Ooh, here and. Boy. I take no care of this one guy. stands in my Open way. Open heart to me. Hmm. You've crossed the I wrong mob. Yet another obstacle. Die! <laughs> you won't survive me. Yeah, much easier when you just do this. I'm trying to fight enemies back. Makes it a little more difficult. I should have applied more buffs for this fight. Because this is one of the harder fights in the shield base. I'll 
you back. Am I not? No, what is that? I hope you appreciate this. Right, so the Crypt Raider's armor gives you a Yes, plus one skill mode grants a square, plus two insight bonus to armor class against undead. Not the greatest for this dungeon, but... Could be worse. I'll have to equip this as well. Alright, we can try the water elemental now. Move out! What's on your mind? I wonder. Um, I'll probably enlarge Camellia regardless, just so she's not on the front line. Because uh, the Water Elemental has a cleave attack. I found something! <laughs> Together we stand. So she needs to be on defensive fighting here. Um, Shield of Faith. Bears Endurance, do we have? I know I can cast that. Bought it for no reason. And use that as well, and obviously I don't want him to use it. Uh, let's see. Twenty-six armor class is nothing to shake a stick at. Might be good enough. We'll see. Uh, I haven't done demon yet. Uh, she might no make it on my demon run. Battles await. Well, doubt is the heart's Save greatest the last one for I'm me. losing my temper. The spirits demand your blood. You are today's sacrifice. Let's hear you cry. Head on. Yeah, properly buffed. Fights are a bit of a joke. I should have buffed up before the previous fight. What's that there? I was trying to push it. Plus, I'm so used to Baldur's Gate 3 where I don't need to buff up for anything. So, <laughs> I have my buffs out, but gosh, on balance, you really just don't need it. I lead. You follow. No, I've not done Devil yet. Uh, that'll, that might be next or might be after my Azada run. No, I have about seven more runs. 
This will be my third one out of ten. Uh, I don't plan on doing one for stream. They're going to all be Let's Plays. Well, no, sorry, you're right. If I do stream one, it'll be the, uh, the neutral run. So not dogmatic, not heretic, or heretical, or uh, iconoclast. Head on! None shall escape! No glory without risk! Go for their hearts! Make every strike count! Yeah, I'm gonna kind of wing it, because playing through so many times, I don't really care if companions make it all the way through or not. Because at some point, I'm gonna experience all their stories anyway. At this point, I have. I mean, not they're both good and bad endings. Oh, that'll probably do. Forget. I think th this is a small room, right? It has two enemies in it. I will help where I can. Might be three. Yeah, champion and a wizard. They will break against our resolve. The Inheritor, guide my you blade! You won't survive me! Out of my way! The spirits demand your blood! Lane was the only one getting any hits in there towards the end. Onwards. What do we have here? I found... Uh... Something? Oh, well, there's an enemy in here, too. I am helpful, am I not? Move out! I have, to, I have to remember this isn't Baldur's Gate 3. I've been a little spoiled. Even Rogue Trader I found to be quite easy. Except for the ship battles, those are much more difficult than the, the regular fights. Upgrades don't come as frequently, and if you make one mistake and get hit by a salvo of torpedoes, it's over. So we've got cultist, a cleric, and a wizard. The wizard's gonna use magic missile. He's probably our priority here. Rely on me. Um, cultist will run in once we charge here. So let's have 
Kila charge him. Everyone is mortal in this world. That character charge him. We can have Camellia charge the guy in the back. I'm all ears. And plan, focus Endure the wizard first. This. Do not fear! Do not win! Oh, that's another sharpshooter. Forgot about that guy. Make every strike count. You are today's sacrifice! You crossed the wrong line! Here you cry! You won't survive me! I'm gonna try to do the full story playthroughs for all of them. Aeon is one of the ones I'm most excited to do. I'll probably do that right before Lich, then do Lich, and then uh, Angel. Alright, let's drop some of the stuff on the ground. We can always pick it up later. Let's get back. It's good to be back in Pathfinder. I know I just played the uh, Lord of Nothing DLC pretty recently, but it's just such a different vibe from the the main story. Not in a bad way, but supposedly I missed a whole lot. Granted, when I was doing it, I was doing four Let's Plays at once, which was a bit too much. So I wasn't being as thorough as I probably should have been. But one of the areas I missed a fair bit of content. I hope you appreciate this. I'm gonna go for more of a lawful evil lich. The spirits guide me. So I'm the class I wanna do it's suboptimal to the point where like I I don't know if that's what I'm gonna end up doing or not. What's I'm on, on the I'm mind? still on the fence about it. I, I still remember. I have time to to dwell on it. Well, the second DLC was more combat focused. As a cleric, two clerics, and the hand of Hosilia. Or Hosilla. Together we stand. We get to the well? Let's move already. Clerics will be in good shape. Are we in trouble yet? Endure. Did we this. find trouble? No. Let's hear you cry. Go for their hearts. Run them through. Be able to, I mean, just I think fear builds are a lot of fun. I did that fear barian run in Keymaker, and I feared every boss except for the ones that are immune to it. And like, I sent dragons running the the uh, Kragvan Orm in that cave uh, next to the uh, bridge over Gudrun River. Scared him until he was dead. That was that was such a fun fun playthrough. I leave. You fall. Are we uh, encumbered again? Yeah. What I love about loot in this game, you can drop it, and when you leave an area, you just pick it up when you leave. Onwards. I also really like the uh, system in Solasta. A bright future awaits us. I'll cut you the heartbeat quickens. The light take you! Make every strike count. You crossed the wrong mongrel. Into the fray! Hey! <laughs> 
Oh, just a just a casual DC sixty. Well, tell me when it's at uh, DC sixty one. I'll be impressed. I am helpful, am I not? Hey, a potion of haste. That'd have been useful against the uh, water elemental. I know there's one in the dungeon. I just never remember where it's at. Doesn't change hers because it's bark skin up right now. Good old bark skin. I will help you. Where I can. Always be ready for the worst. Stands in my way. Did we step on their toes as oh, well? Oh yeah, it can't be. It's... The spirits demand your blood! You won't survive me. Out of my way! Endure this! <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. My cones pile on! Oh yeah, I should probably equip this. Um, it really matters who has it equipped though. It's not that useful here, except for against the one fight that you find it in. <laughs> did he have a, did he have one health? He did. So the uh, temporary wounds you get from all this waiting. A lot of the angels me. kept him alive there, or kept him conscious. Uh, take care of Demon Ace. I'm actually going to wrap up the stream here shortly. I was planning on finishing the uh, Shield Maze, but I stopped to read a few things and it slowed down. This room? I don't remember this room. It's new? Or have I never found it before? I am helpful, am I not? I never real stand out loot. I mean, the potion of blur is useful. This has the elementals in it. I lead, you follow. Or the one elemental? No, there's two. No reason. I'm to losing my temper. Hmm? Open your heart to me. Rely on me. They will break against our resolve. Let's hear you cry. Run them through! Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. I feel like I have this dungeon pretty well memorized, but I don't remember that room. Could go back and look at my previous content. Another bonus to doing Let's Plays and recording them and uploading them. Say, oh, hey, I don't remember how to solve this puzzle. I can just go back and see how I did it before. I mean, I, I used to have a potion of blur for the final fight, so I feel like I've been in that room before. Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to wrap up the stream here, and next time we'll finish the shield maze and head into the Great Garrison. Uh, with the goal of finishing the Great Garrison.
That's how that goes. We had one party wipe so far. We'll probably have a couple on the lower levels, and then, uh... It'll even out, you know, as we get more powerful, of course. But I don't know. It's not gonna be the most optimal party. At least it won't be my ideal party going through this time. I'm kind of shoehorning Wolgif into the party. I mean, the Redemption Art kind of fits. I want to use Trevor, though. I'm trying to look for a reason to use Trevor. I'll have to worry about that till the latter half of the game. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. Uh, stay safe, stay classy. I need to... Make my saves. Let me make a couple real quick. By a couple, I mean three. Alright, uh, stay safe, stay classy, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. That's uh, just a, a vital strike build. Yeah, yeah, you can usually... I stick to the roleplay stuff on core, but maybe a couple of mishaps along the way. Alright, take care, everybody.